Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video, we used the Maclaurin series to find the sine of x, or at least an expression as an infinite sum for the sine of x. What we're going to do in this video is find an infinite sum expression for the cosine of x. So if this is the sine of x, then we realize also that the cosine of x is actually the derivative, the d dx of the sine of x, which means we can take the derivative of this series and be able then to get an expression for the cosine of x. So let's see if that's the case. So again, we're going to take the d dx of the infinite series expression of the sine of x, which is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial. And I think you can see the pattern here. Now we're going to take the derivative of each one of those terms. The derivative of the first term is simply 1. The derivative of the second term is minus 3x squared over 3 factorial. And here we get plus 5x to the fourth over 5 factorial. And here we get minus 7x to the sixth over 7 factorial. And of course that would keep going. We get plus the next term here would be x to the ninth. So that would be 9x to the eighth over 9 factorial. And you can see the pattern here. Now, to simplify that, notice if we divide 3 by the factorial of 3, that actually becomes 1 over the factorial of 2. So this is equal to 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial plus x to the 8th over 8 factorial and the series continues like that. And this then becomes the infinite series expression for the cosine of an angle. Of course, the limit is that the angle x must be somewhere between minus 1 and 1. So we can say that the radius of conversion is equal to 1. So there you go. Once you have the expression for the sine of x, it's then very easy to come up with the expression for the cosine of x. And that's how it's done.